how do you pronounce this thing again? Functors. I hope I pronounced it right. So basically, it's a function, but with OR. Functors. The topic today is a little bit more advanced, and you probably won't really use it that much within day-to-day -day coding in Rescript, except when you're creating a library. Enter functors. Functors is a module-level function that takes one module and not put another module. So you can say that functors is a higher-order module, just like we know that JavaScript function is a higher-order function because you can take function as arguments and you can produce another function. At this point, we are pretty familiar with regular syntax for module. Let me remind you. Pretty simple, nothing really striking. Now, what if we want to make the same thing, but with functor? We see this syntax module here. So it goes on module and then the module name and then equal sign and open curly braces and close curly braces. With functor, we just have to change this into a function. So we add an open parenthesis and closing parenthesis and also an arrow syntax here. Now this looks more like a function, right? Because it is. You can call this functor and it will return the module with plus operation. Let's name this make module with plus operation. And we can use it like this. We use the open parenthesis and close parenthesis just as when we are calling a function. So make module with plus operation and open parenthesis, closing parenthesis will return a module and we assign it into this module here. And now we can use the module. With this module level function, we can dynamically make our own modules. Let me give you an example. This looks a little bit confusing, but fear not, I am here to explain it for you. First, we have a regular module called with plus. This module only has one function, which is plus. It just adds two integer numbers and return an integer. And this is just a type of a module, not the actual implementation of the module. And the second one, we have the actual implementation of the module, which is module with plus operation. This module with plus operation, its type is with plus. And it has one function called plus that takes two integers, x and y, adds them together and return it. So nothing really strange here because you already know this. Now we have a functor. This functor is called plus then multiply by two. This functor receives a module with a type with plus. So this is the type of the module that this functor receives. And we can name that module as D module. So this functor will return a module that has a function called plus then multiply by two. This function plus then multiply by two accepts two integers, which is x and y, and return an integer. And inside this function, we use the module dot plus x and y, and this will give us the addition of x and y. We assign it into plus result here, and we multiply the plus result by two and return it. So now we are using this functor. We call it and we pass the module with plus operation. Why can we pass this? Because the module with plus operation is of type with plus. And we say that plus then multiply by two module receives a module with the type with plus. So everything checks out. We call this functor and we return a module and we assign it to the final module here. Finally, we can use the final module and we can use the function inside that final module, which is plus then multiply by two. That's about it. Let's take a look at a more complicated example.
here we have a module type called orderable. Remember, this is a module type and not a module implementation. And then we're going to make a functor that accepts this module type. Let's take a look at how this code works. So the functor make sortable array receives an item module and this item module need to be of type orderable. In this functor, we have a type T and this type T is an array that contains the item.t. Because this item is of type orderable, so that means item.t is this type T right here. Then we have a variable called empty with type t, and the type t is just this, which is the array of item.t. And we say that empty is an empty array. Next, we have an add function. This add function receives the array, which is of type t, which is this one, and it receives an item, and this item is of type item.t. In this case, the type is orderable.t, the type here. We make a copy of the array and assign it to the copy it binding, and we push an item into the array, and we return the copy it one. Next, we have a sort function. This sort function receives an array that is of type t, which is this type, and it returns another type t, which is basically also this type and here we copy the array and assign it to copy and we do an array sorting the array sort takes two arguments which is copied array and a callback function that decides the ordering the callback function has two arguments which is a and b and a is of type item.t and b is also of type item.t in this case, that means the item.t is orderable.t, which is this. This function returns a float. And now we can finally use the item.compare. And because item is of type orderable, that means item has a function called compare. And this function receives a type of orderable.t. And we know that compare here receives a and b, and the type of a and b are item.t. So it checks out. And now we just pattern match the result. And depending on the ordering, we return 0, 1, or minus 1. After that, we return the copied array. By the way, I like to copy the array because it is actually a good practice, especially in JavaScript world, to make your code immutable. So don't let random mutabilities creep over in your code. It's better to just create a new object and do manipulation in that new object. If you have been following so far, then great job, congratulations. I know it looks a little bit more complicated than usual, but no worries, you'll get it in no time. That's all for today's video. As usual, let me down below in the comments if you have any questions. See you in the next video.